Hi, thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned because today I've got the Mercedes EQC with me and it's a good looking car, isn't it? So I think there's two videos in this. One, I'm gonna give you just my opinion and my overall review of the Mercedes EQC as somebody who's been driving electric cars for six years and most of that time been a Tesla owner. So will a Tesla owner like the Mercedes EQC? Well, I'll tell you, but secondly, and I think we need to make a second video out of this because otherwise it'd just be too long on this video. In the warehouse today, I happen to have a Jaguar I-Pace, a Tesla Model X and a Mercedes e-tron. So all the comparable SUV style electric 4x4s on the market today. So with that second video, we will do some direct comparisons to show you the difference between each one in terms of space and practicality inside especially. So if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button now and you'll see that video following shortly. Before we get into this video, let me just say a thank you to Marshall uh, Mercedes of Winchester for lending me this car today. It's on their demonstrator fleet and they very kindly agreed to let me uh, borrow it for a day to do these review videos. So thank you very much. It's not for sale with me. It is on their demonstrator fleet and no doubt will be for sale with them at some point in the not too distant future. So if you like to look at this Mercedes, don't forget to contact Marshall in Winchester. So in the UK, the EQC starts from about 65,000 pounds new. I think there's a Sport and an AMG. This is the AMG line one, and it's in the metallic black. I think it looks brilliant, pretty mean, nice wheels. I love the design of these wheels, which are in size 21 inches. Um, the ride does seem to be very comfortable. So I'll go into more of that in a moment when I drive the car with you. Um, but these all come with the same drivetrain. So it's got an 80 kilowatt hour battery and Mercedes claim a range of that is up to 255 miles. I'd expect in the real world a range of probably about 200, to be honest. You could probably make it to 255 miles if you try, but with this battery size and type of car, I'd expect about 200. Charging speeds on a rapid charger are 110 kilowatts. So that is a little bit less than some of the rivals, but what we have seen so far is actually it's a quite a consistent pretty good charging speed right through most of the battery range. And for more information, I have to say Bjorn Nealand's videos will give you much more in-depth review on charging speed. So do check out his channel as well. Uh, it's a four wheel drive car. So you've got one motor at the back, one motor at the front. And I think especially in eco mode, it usually just drives off the front motor and then the back motor joins in when you want a bit more performance. And it is quick, 0 to 62 in just over five seconds. And it certainly goes down the road very well indeed. You wouldn't expect a car of this size to have such performance. And like all electric cars, it's instant torquey power and very smooth. So brilliant. And again, more of how it drives in a moment. So EQC 400 AMG, here we go, let's get into it. So what's it like for long distance and being on the motorway? Well, I really like it. I think it's very, very good. The seat is proving supportive. The ride is comfortable. There's not much noise from the wind. It's pouring with rain today, but other than the noise of some rain on the windscreen, it's very quiet and comfortable. Um, I think you could happily spend hours in this car and it even has uh, a refresh mode and a vitality mode, as well as eco and comfort for the drive system. The dash and ventilation system has this uh, vitality uh, repo, refresh mode, power nap. And what it does in these different modes is it actually displays different colors and images on the screen and on the dashboard. And then um, with vitality, plays some uplifting music for you. So that's quite interesting, something to play with on a long journey. But other than that, the sound system's excellent. It's just a nice, good, comfortable place to be. And I'm really impressed, yeah, really impressed. So now I've switched to dynamic mode and I've been hustling this car along some country roads. And this is probably the bit I've been most surprised by. I think it's pretty darn good. Um, you know, for a car, not just for an SUV, not just for an electric car, but actually just for a car. I've been impressed with this um, because at the end of the day, it is quite a large car, but 
in the dynamic mode on the country road I just feel like um, it's got just the right balance so um, it's got a sharper throttle response now it's got plenty of performance the brakes are biting really well they've got good performance in the brakes I've got confidence in them the steering actually is positive and has a pretty good feel about it it turns in nicely I really like it and then in terms of the ride, although this is a sort of comfortable soft riding car, it's absorbing all these bumps and ridges really well, but I still feel like I've got a kind of bit of a connection to the road surface and kind of know how much grip I've got. Um, it's absorbing it, but I can feel it. So it's still comfortable, absolutely it is, but um, yeah, I've just got this sort of connection to it still. So I actually think it's a really well balanced car, good body control I thought it might feel a bit under damped because of you know it's trying to be very comfortable but no yeah, I'm impressed well done Mercedes you've been doing this a long while haven't you yeah you've got this bit sorted out I have to say it's probably the bit that surprised me the most about this car and I think it's very very good I have to say I've been spotting these more and more on the road and they're very distinctive because we've got this light bar that comes right across the front so when you see one of these coming down the road I think it really stands out I think it looks pretty good excellent uh, LED matrix headlights and then these vents here actually do go right through to the other side to help with airflow so I think it's a pretty handsome good looking distinctive car on the side of the car, it's got that SUV shape, and if you're an owner or know of the Mercedes GLC, that's what it's based on, so it's quite familiar. Although a lot of the parts are very different, um, the doors are apparently the same as the GLC and the windscreen, but most of the other panels are unique to the EQC. As I say, big 21-inch alloys in this one, plus it's got some aluminium side rails here, which they feel pretty sturdy. Yep, not going to break those. Um, Inside, we'll come on to that in a moment, but I think it's a pretty handsome car. It's not too big, as you can see the size of this here. It's reasonable in size, not massive. Back of the car comes down distinctively with this uh, spoiler here. Nice rounded shape here. I think the back is quite distinctive. Again, I always seem to spot these on the road by the shape, but again, this long LED light bar, like lots of cars seem to have now, the Audi e-tron has it, Porsche Taycan. Pulsar, quite a few, but yeah, I think it's pretty handsome. It looks kind of large and square, but they've done a good job of it with a nice hidden tailgate release there. And then that reveals the boot space, which again, this is where we're gonna do some more direct comparisons with the other electric SUVs. But for most people, day-to-day -day use, it's practical, wide enough, good entry, not too high, smooth entry and exit here, so you can slide things in and out. What have we got under here? So we've got a mixture of cables that I didn't tidy up, should have done, um, but there's a little bit of extra storage underneath here. And the seat's quite usefully split in two places, so you can fold one of these three segments or all of them completely. So good usable boot space, not massive, not massively deep. I think for the dog owners, if you've got a reasonable sized dog, is there enough height in here? Well, that's what we're gonna check and compare to the others. Just notice these little hooks on the handles at the back here, so you could probably hang something from them. What would you hang from these hooks? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you could hang from the hooks of an open tailgate on a Mercedes EQC. And of course we have power closure. And at the back, behind this little badge here, when you go into reverse, is a reversing camera. Voila! And this gives you a reasonable view of the rear of the vehicle and shows you lines when you're parking based on your steering angle. It also has sensors all around and cameras at the front and also at the side, which will create a 360 image when you're parking just to help you line yourself up in the parking space. Um, it works pretty well. These 21 inch wheels look great. They would of course, I think, be very easy to curb, very expensive to refurbish and cleaning all these. <sighs> wouldn't want to do that. Charging ports are on the driver's side in the UK here and that has a CCS connection, but this is where I was really impressed. Just have a look at the inside of this.
you get in, again, it just, just looks and feels great. So there's a button here, but this is just for a bit of lumbar adjustment. As with Mercedes, the adjustment for the doors, uh, the seats is on the doors here. Um, and what I do like, actually, there's a thigh support adjustment. And that is great. You don't see it in all cars. You don't see it in a Tesla. Uh, the Audi e-tron has it, but I think that's really nice to have. I've got fairly long legs, so it suits me well. There's a electric steering column adjustment on this. And of course, various memory settings. The only thing I found slightly is to me from here, it looks like the wheel is slightly off to the left, but actually when I was driving it earlier, I didn't notice anything with that. Right, so what I'm gonna do is put the seat into uh, my driving position and get it comfortable. So I would sit about there. Let's have a look at the space in the back. So for me, it's six foot tall in the back. I've still got plenty of space even behind my driving position. Loads of knee room good distance between the floor and the seat base, which isn't always the case of electric cars. The seats are comfortable with about the right amount of recline and not too upright. So it's good. And I can actually get my feet under this front seat as well. There's quite a gap there. So you can actually move your feet around a bit as well, which is really nice on a long journey. So the only criticisms in the back here really are that the glass roof is only above the front. So you uh, just have a dark roof here. And with the tinted windows and the black trim in this car, it does start getting a little bit dark in the back. I don't really like this plastic sensor console here. That looks and feels a little bit cheap. Um, but, you know, this, with the Burmeister sound system and this trim on the doors here, generally everything else feels pretty reasonable and it's a comfortable place to be. But, stop there. A centre tunnel. Now, this is something electric cars don't usually have. And in the floor here, it does have this... Uh, tunnel coming off the floor which just limits your foot space so sat in the middle um, one this base here is a bit higher up but i still actually have the headroom but this tunnel is obviously a bit in the way now from that side remember i could move my feet around so i think it's it's doable it's okay but it would be nice if it was a flat floor all the way through so when you do get into the car it does feel a special place to be it definitely has that premium feel about it that people spending this kind of money would want to see and that's usually the criticism from a tesla really is that they're perfectly nice so I like the minimal look but actually it just doesn't have a mixture of materials that make it feel premium as this car most certainly does you've got these nice slats on the door these lovely air vents different colors different trims different materials gloss black here not so keen on that um, but this opens up wireless phone charger in here cup holders and there's some more storage in here which is good and usable it just has that nice feel about it and i really do like it it took me a little bit to get used to um, some of the uh, mbux system that this car has here and there's plenty of buttons on the steering wheel to choose from and um, in the time i spent with the car so far i have started to get used to it it's not as intuitive as a Tesla, not as easy to use as a Polestar, but I think I would say it's probably slightly simpler to use than a Jaguar I-Pace or an Audi e-tron. So it's just a nice place to be. Now let's show you a little bit more of this MBUX system. Okay, let's try and show you around some of this then. So on this uh, new MBUX system, it's pretty easy to get used to. And I'll just show you around it a little bit as we go here so you can swipe this left and right but you can also move this up and down you can have various theme settings here there we go slightly different layout different colors yeah, it's not bad you do get used to it there's lots to choose from i mean you're probably not going to get bored too quickly if you don't like the color of your interior um, in here a few quick favorite settings here energizing modes i'll tell you one thing that i thought was a little bit more different to most in here whoops let's go to comfort um this was interesting now here you have these different modes for whether you want to uh have the car in a refresh mode and it starts blowing kind of cool air through the vents and it changes it puts this display on and changes the color of the ambient lighting allegedly to make it feel like you're by the seaside and then we have vitality and when we start playing that it plays energizing music just like that oh, stop that so this is interesting i've never seen this in another car before um i'd love to hear in the comments below if you have an eqc and you enjoy having these different modes we used to having driving modes sport eco comfort but to have these modes is 
quite interesting. Um, anyway, here, EQ mode. So you can set um, charging levels, departure time, climate, um, pre-warming and such like. So there's plenty to play around with this on this menu system, but the graphics and interface are really good. And one thing that does make this car stand out is the um, uh, augmented reality sat nav. So the sat nav navigation as you're coming up to junctions will overlay from an image from the front camera the direction to go and where to turn off that. So I'll try and capture some video clips of that to overlay here. So the way this augmented reality works is it, it shows you just a map view normally, but when you're coming up to a junction uh, with an instruction, it will obviously give you the verbal instructions, but then it will show the front camera on the screen so that it gives you this augmented reality display. I'm actually gonna go around this roundabout. So it should actually show me to go right, it doesn't, it just says go straight on, okay. Let's see what happens on the next bit. There we go, let's see, it says go left here. Um, but yeah, quite easy to get used to. We have some separate climate controls down here. So this is easy just to knock the temperature up and down without having to interface with the screen. And then the center display here, again, various options and what you want to have displayed and how you want to have this looking. So here, for example, We've got shortcuts to various aspects, but you can also change this here to a sport mode. And we also have progressive mode here and classic there. Now the way I'm adjusting that, again, this took a little bit of getting used to, but we've got this kind of button on the steering wheel. So if you can see this, I'm sort of swiping up and around this um, it's kind of sensor on the steering wheel here and you can use this one for this screen and this one for this screen So again, actually with a bit of getting used to it actually seems to work quite well And I found myself able to navigate around this fairly quickly So the steering wheel does look like there's a lot of buttons to begin with but I navigated around that quite quickly And then we've got these paddles on the back of the steering wheel here and these are just the regen which I do like so you can pull this down and make your regen effect stronger or you can ease it off as well. I like having that. Let's come down the console here a little bit. Like I say, I don't like the gloss black too much, um, but we do have this touch pad on the uh, sensor panel here. And again, that was quite useful and easy to navigate around. Another volume button here, some buttons to adjust the parking cameras that you're going to use. And then we have our drive mode selection here. Um, which can switch between eco mode, comfort and sport. And you can also um, uh, set an individual setting. So you can have the drivetrain in eco mode, but the sportier uh, steering feel and such like. So nice place to be, I got used to it quite quickly. Oh, head up display. It's got head up display as well, which of course works well. I like head up display. Never see that in a Tesla. Will we ever? Well, we don't know. And then we've got this uh, sunroof here, which just be nice if it was bigger really. What you do notice in this car is just that it isn't that big, I think, really. I mean, the space in the back was good, but it feels quite compact and feels narrower than a Tesla Model X, for example, notably smaller inside and in terms of spaciousness and feel than a Tesla Model X, smaller than an Audi e-tron and probably more comparable with a Jaguar I-Pace. But like I say, we're going to do another video comparing exactly the space and practicality of each one side by side. <laughs> What I was trying to say is the sound system in here is phenomenal. So this has got a Burmeister sound system and it is very, very good. And by the way, under the bonnet, there is no storage space. It's just gubbins, wires, lots of wires, lots of pipes and wires. You know, one thought I had with this car actually, um, we've got this chrome work around here, but if this was de-chromed or chrome deleted, which we do quite a lot of where we wrap the chrome in black, I think that would look pretty mean. So change that to black, make that black, make that black, change these chrome side rails as well perhaps. I think that would look pretty awesome. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you'd love to see one of these de-chromed. If you've got an EQC and you want to de-chrome, let me know, we'd love to do that for you. So when you're going forward, it makes a kind of low, sort of subtle noise to warn pedestrians, but you can't really hear that in the car. When you go into reverse, it does make a beeping noise. Beep, beep. Here's a little display of the headlights when you turn them on. So you can see the LED matrix segments 
testing themselves. And then when you turn it off, they just fade away. Very nice. I've got Elon Musk standing in front of me there. I wonder if his EQC will just drive into him or automatically emergency brake. No. Just drove into him. Didn't automatically emergency brake or anything. That was me. Not the best scenario. We can't really do this outside today because it's absolutely pouring with rain and our Elon is cardboard, so he would just be a mush on the floor. Um, maybe we'll test that another day, the automatic emergency braking system. Now we do have another video on that we've just released recently, so check out our other videos. So what don't I like about the car? Well, I'm quite good at moaning about things, to be honest. Um, so whilst it has impressed me overall, what I don't like, well, the center console there with black shiny plastic, that's going to get scratched, but the rest of the cabin does feel very, very good. It's a little bit dark in the back, um, but it's still got good space. The frunk, or the front, underneath the bonnet would be good to see some frunk space, what we call frunk space now. Anyway, some storage under the bonnet would be good, even if it's just for some cables or a couple of soft bags, just to make it a bit more practical. And then I guess the only thing I can criticize really is the kind of battery size, maybe a slightly bigger battery option would be useful just to extend the range comfortably beyond 200 miles. Slightly better efficiency, although it's comparable with the competition, to be honest. And then the charging speed. Now, it would be good. I don't think we need big batteries if we have fast charging. And this has got pretty fast charging. It's quite consistent, but faster charging and maybe a bigger battery option would be nice to see. But other than that, that's about all I can fault it for, to be honest.